Dear classmates, welcome back to the BOSI testing class. This chapter is for simulation. This is our cross road map. Now that we have basic knowledge about logic simulation and we know some basic concept about full modeling, now we enter an important topic for simulation. Here is a motivating problem. Suppose we design this circuit and we decide to apply three patterns 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0 to this circuit. And your manager asks you, what's the full coverage of your test set? How are you going to answer this question? To answer this question, we will need for simulation. So, why am I learning this chapter? A force simulator can help you on three things. A force simulator can help you to determine force coverage. Second, a force simulator can guide ATPG to determine which fault has not been detected yet. And the third, force simulator can help us to diagnose fail chip. Here we have a famous quotation from Victor Hugo. He said that one sees qualities at a distance and the defects at close range. This is an interesting quotation. In real life, we should look at other people's quality instead of their defects. However, for circuit testing, a force simulator should check each defect very closely. In the force simulation chapter, we will first do a short introduction, followed by many force simulation techniques. We will also introduce alternatives to force simulation. Then we will discuss some issues of force simulation. Then we conclude this chapter. So what is a force simulator? We show a very similar figure in the logic simulation chapter. In a force simulator, we are given a set of input stimuli, which is our test patterns. And we are given circuit models as well as the four models. This is different from what we had in logic simulation. And the full simulator will give us the good circuit response as well as the faulty circuit response so that we can know which fault has been detected and which fault has not been detected and we can calculate the fault coverage so in this figure we can see the difference between logic simulator and the fault simulator so what are the applications of force simulation? First of all, we can evaluate the quality of our test set. This is what we call fault grading. With fault grading, we can determine the fault coverage of a test set. This is like grading an exam. And the second application is automatic test pattern generation, ATPG. Four simulator can identify which fault has been detected and which fault has not been detected. So ATPG can continue to work on those undetected faults. The third application is diagnosis. The fault simulation can generate a fault dictionary to find the culprit fault response for the failure. We will see this in more detail in the diagnosis chapter. To sum up, force simulation is a very useful tool. It can be used 
as a standalone tool for foregrading or it can also be used as an embedded tool for ADBG and diagnosis. This is a typical flow for ATPG. After we pick a target for, we try to generate a test pattern for it. Then we run for simulation to determine which fault has been detected. Then we perform a fault dropping. Fault dropping means that we remove the detected fault from the fault list so that we can prevent repeated test generation for the detected fault. The reason is that a fault can be dropped as long as it is detected once. Please know that Fault dropping is not used for diagnosis. We will see the reason in the diagnosis chapter. And then, if there is any untried fault, we will keep in this loop until all the fault has been tried. As you can see, fault simulation is the core engine for ATPG, so it is a very important technique. In this chapter, we will show six different fault simulation techniques. We will start from the simplest fault simulation technique, the serial fault simulation. A simple idea to implement a fault simulator is to first run a fault free logic simulation, store the grid output, and for every fault, we modify the good circuit. This is what we call fault injection. To obtain a faulty circuit, and we run logic simulation on the faulty circuit. We compare the faulty output with the stored good output. If they are different, then the fault is detected. The advantage of serial fault simulation is that it's very easy to implement. It's based on a regular fault simulator with some small modification in the circuit. And we are able to simulate many fault models such as stuck at fault, delay fault, bridging fault, you name it. The disadvantage of the serial fault simulation is that it's very slow. Here is an example to illustrate the idea of serial fault simulation, consider only for F and the fault G. Fault F is A stuck at 1 fault. Fault G is J stuck at 0 fault. Given three test patterns, pattern P1, P2, and the P3, we run the good simulation and the outputs are 1, 1, 0. We store the output. And we modify the circuit and run a full simulation for 4F. We can detect 4F because the 40 output is not the same as the good output. Assume there is no full dropping, we can still detect uh, 4F for the second pattern but we cannot detect 4F on the third pattern. And then we pick 4G. We cannot detect 4G by the first pattern, neither the second pattern, but we can detect 4G by the third pattern. So here we show a serial force simulation flow. Given the big F, which is a collapse for list, we run for free simulation for all the patterns and we store the good outputs. Then we pick the next four, small f, from the four list. We start from the beginning of the test set. We pick a pattern P, run the full simulation for pattern P. If the output are the same, then we pick the next pattern. We continue 
this loop until the end of the pattern or the 4F is detected. When 4F is detected, we drop it from the full list. This is what we call a full dropping. After that, we pick the next fold. As you can see in this flow chart, we have two loops. The inner loop is a loop of pattern. The outer loop is a loop of fold. We can speed up fold simulation by fold dropping. Here, it's a quiz of our motivating problem. Given three test patterns, and uh, consider all the 18 folds. Please use the serial fold simulation to determine the fold coverage. For example, given the first fold A1, when we inject A stuck at one fold, we know that it's detected by pattern P1. If we inject fold A stuck at zero, it's not detected by any pattern. So now, please pause the video and continue to work on the other 16 folds. Okay, now back to the video. Here are our answers. Have you got them all correctly? Looking at this table, we can see that 7 folds are not detected by any pattern and 11 folds are detected. So our fold coverage is 11 over 18. As you can see, this is a pretty slow process. So, what's the complexity of full simulation? The complexity of full simulation is big OF, which represents the number of false times, number of test patterns, and the number of gates. So, it's more complicated than logic simulation by a factor of F. If you remember, Logic simulation complexity is only O G times P. So compared with logic simulation, for simulation is more complicated computationally. On the other hand, ATPG is NP complete. So in the worst case, it can be exponential. So compared with ATPG, full simulation is easier. So we can use full simulation to guide ATPG to determine which fault has been detected. In summary, ATPG is the most difficult computationally, and uh, full simulation and uh, logic simulation is the simplest computationally. In summary, in this video we have introduced force simulation. A force simulator produces faulty circuit output. It can be used for fault grading or ADPG or diagnosis. Force simulation is polynomial time, which is O P times G times F. We have shown you the simplest for simulation idea, serial for simulation, which simulates one fold by one fold at a time. At the end of this video, we have a FFT for you to think about. In our for simulation flow chart, we see that there is an inner loop of pattern and the outer loop of fold. Can we just swap the inner loop with the outer loop? If we do the fault first, in this way, we can drop the fault faster. Is this a good idea?
please think about it. Thank you for watching.